Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This welcome is a, back. That's right. Just welcome. We didn't... Well, because these are our fans. They tune in every week. Yeah, but this is the start of the show, so it's welcome. It's not, it's not like we started the show and then paused it and then we came back. We're saying welcome back. There's it's nothing just, wrong with saying welcome it's back. It's just welcome. You ain't Cotter. Welcome back, Cotter. Yes. Welcome to a special edition of 321 Screw. Hey. This, this is where Captain Bill and Big Shot Joe review a wrestling show that they attended. So, mainly... Yep, yep, yep. We got a little local promotion here. Um, out of Brevard County. ARW, Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling. Which is what the 321 stands for, Brevard. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Alex Red is the owner, CEO, and promoter. promoter. Uh, he's also one of the admins on my Beyond the Squared Circle page the group, whatever. So if you haven't joined that, so uh, so yeah, we up. went. They, they had um, they had a show. First time uh, I've attended ARW show. Yep, same here. Last uh, last week that we attended, it was the Coco Convention. It Center. was the Extreme Torch Four. And yep, and Coco it was Convention also Center. The three year anniversary of ARW. Yep, exactly. Three year anniversary of ARW. And uh, they had a little special theme to this uh, this event. It was ARW versus ECW with some old school ECW what? legends in attendance. Absolutely. Um, some of those legends, you had Gary Wolf. One half of the Pitbulls tag team. Yep. You okay. also had the Sandman, which we'll get into that a little, a little bit later. later yeah. Absolutely. And then you also had Sabu, the homicidal, suicidal, genocidal. I always wonder who he's pointing at. <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, Chuckles and Zach Monster were wondering too. Yeah, man, they were looking up, and he just kept. So uh, uh, Raven, Raven and Just Incredible. Yeah. Uh, they tag team together, yeah. and uh, it was interesting the, seeing them. The franchise Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas was in the main event. Yes, he was. The ARW Atomic Heavyweight Champion Wes Briscoe. Uh, it was a good match. It's probably so, one of my uh, favorite matches of the night. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was um very cool. Like he said it was, you know, I mean, it's, it wasn't. It's not a big venue, so. There really were no bad seats. No, there wasn't. Yeah, I mean, even there was no guardrails either. You know, which uh, is kind of unique. I was lucky enough to have a front row seat. Giuseppe over here was in. I bought my ticket. He late. was back in the but yeah, yeah. His ticket was bought. You know, at the door. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they had a good attendance. I mean, for the my ticket actually, I didn't buy my ticket. My ticket was. Given was to given to me by someone who had bought the ticket was going to go and then decided not to. she wasn't going to go so she didn't want the ticket to go away so Ashley Hill thanks for the hookup yeah yeah so um, yeah very cool very cool uh, it, it was interesting uh, Friday at uh, like I said it was Friday night the 21st the 21st yeah I'm not sure what day you're watching this on now but um, so, uh, yeah, it started out, the, uh, first match of the night was a, uh, kind of like a, what they called it, under the radar battle royal, it was, it was like intergender match. Yeah, it was intergender, because there was a couple, couple chicks that were involved in it. Yeah, Gia, uh, Gia Roman. Gia Roman and, uh, uh, Phoenix, uh, or no, no, excuse me, Persia. 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 And you also had guys like, uh, who was the uh, guy, Johnny? Johnny Atomic. Johnny Atomic, he was in that match. Yeah, um, he eventually won it. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, it was just, um, it was, <clears throat> it was an impromptu match. It was, it was yeah, just, yeah, it was, it was, um, some, some, some people that were like, you could tell the ones that were like just kind of there. They were still kind of new, kind of green. Just yeah, this was this was you know they, they were in the early stages of of their little indie wrestling career uh, careers. Yeah, and then you could tell there was a few people that was in that was 
that we're seeing. A little more, a little more season. Yeah, I knew a little more what they were doing. But um, overall, very entertaining. But yeah, it was entertaining. It was fun. It was over it the was top rope. Much. I was rooting for. Uh, I was rooting for either Gia or Persia, myself included, to win. Um, unfortunately, I was. I was rooting for two of the both. Fortunately, it was uh, someone by the name of Johnny Atomic. Who came out at the end when everybody when he was acting like he was injured and he came out and yeah. pushed the other guy over the top rope and that was it. That was all she wrote. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was one of those classic, you know, he didn't go over the top rope. He was like went out underneath and was laying on the ground, you know, outside the ring and he waited to the last minute when there was just the one guy left in the ring who thought that he had won. He's in there celebrating. And then he climbs up and jumps in the ring and grabs him and tosses him over. So, one of those scenarios. But, yeah, it was entertaining. Well, and then you had the very <clears> next <throat> match of the yeah, night. Well, yeah, that was the, the Destiny defended her Atomic Bombshells women's title. Yep. Um, so, she successfully defended it. Yep. I like her character, man. I dig yeah, it. Yeah, she paints the clown her face. face like, and no, that clown is more like a skeleton. Well, skeleton, you know, but it, it is really neat, man. Yeah. I like it. I dig it. So, yeah. Yeah, she won. And um, You had C.J. O'Doyle versus Gary Wolf. Gary Teacher Wolf versus the student. Bulls. And I guess the whole story was Gary Wolf come out and, you know, he... Uh, you know, he had paid money to go to Gary Wolf's school to learn to wrestle, and Gary Wolf somehow did him wrong, and he was mad because he never apologized for it, and it was kind of that, that was the angle they were going with. So throughout the whole match, you know, C.J. O'Doyle kept, you know, yelling stuff at him, you know, like, I'm a man now, Gary, I'm a man. You know, why didn't you, you know, you, all you had to do was say you were sorry, and, Kept saying, "Why, Gary? Why?" <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the Gary Wolf won, and then at the end of the match, he Gary tried, tried to, to hug him and tried shake to, you his know, hand. shake his hand and give him a hug, and CJ was going for it. Oil, fake like he's going for it, and blow blowed him and hit him in the old bean bag. Yep, 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 yep. So that was the end of that one. Yeah, that was the end of that uh, one. That was and, it. Uh, we had. Let's see, what, what, what was the next one? I believe was the uh, Shannon Moore. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think so, because... Yeah, I think it was. It was uh, Shannon Moore... Versus Vertigo. Who, uh, who some of you may, you know, remember the name from WCW and WWE. In WWE with Matitude, or Matitude, version one. Yeah, and um, he was part of... One of the greatest... Three count... Boy bands of all time. I mean, they put... New Kids on the Block in Sync, 98 Degrees. Yeah. The list goes on. They put them to shame. Recount. It was Recount. Shannon Moore, Evan Courageous, and, and Hurricane uh, Helms. Yeah, Shane Helms. Shane Helms. Sugar Shane Helms. Sugar Daddy, Daggy. I can't. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. He's got a million names. Yeah, it was funny. But that used to crack me but, up. But, you know, I mean, Shannon Moore's not the, uh, you know, he's certainly he's not a small not guy that, anymore. That, you know, yeah, that skinny little, uh, no, he's Jack. Little dude from, from, you know, and he looks like he could kick somebody's anymore. ass. Yeah, so. he's, he's definitely spent a lot of time in the gym and yep, a lot yep, of yep. time in the tattoo parlor. That dude has got all kinds of tats. Yep, yep, yep. But, yeah, he was in the match. Um, the atomic, the, the current atomic level, or next, next atomic, level next championship. Level champion, Vertigo. Um, cool guy, man. Cool guy. We Very got good. The, we got a later chance Later on that night, yeah. Man, we got like the chance. Minutes. just Yeah, just in 15, 20 minutes, you know, we just just kind of stood around bullshit and, you know, talking. It, it was cool talking really to nice him. nice guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, you know. Well, and... And, and he was telling us how he, he's, he's married into uh, The Rock's family, basically, now. He's married to... Uh, what did he say? It was the, the the niece or something of uh, Afa or one of those? Something. I one can't. of those wild smells. It's like the niece or the granddaughter or something. I don't he's, know. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, he's married to her now, so he's part of the family. Because you know, he was talking about The Rock and Roman Reigns and the Usos. He was at uh, Rocky Johnson's funeral. He was one of the pallbearers. Yep. Uh, so it was him in the match. And uh, then the, the the second ECW legend 
Sandman. Sandman was the fourth member of, uh, excuse me, it was Shannon Moore, Chico Adams, who I, and I, I, I'm a fan of Chico Adams after, after that night, man. Uh, yeah, again, I talked with him some after, you know, yeah, after that night, cool. too. Um, he but really he's good. great charisma. He's good, yeah. He it, he does a bad guy so well. Too. Yeah, dude. He he he'll be he would be great doing cutting promos. He's just he. I mean, he can he make the faces. He you know he's he just the way. Ta- yeah, he's. I I could see him. I could see him uh, going somewhere. Now talk about the fourth. But uh, then Sandman guy. come out. You know, and kendo stick and all. Listen, I was I was stoked, you know, because I'm like, dude, yeah. some Sandman. I mean, me I, too. I remember watching ECW, you know, back in the day, and seeing this guy and just, you know, I, dude, I mean, he is a legend in the old ECW. Yes, he Apps is. In and the old ECW, he's legendary with some of his old antics. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, he and, is. And. Those antics were in full display last Friday. At ARW. Um, I, I will say this. That was, and I hate to say this again, man, because I was such a fan of Sandman. Mm-hmm. But Sandman was probably the low point of the night for it, me. It was me too. And the reason for that being, let me let us explain, is when this music kicked up, and we knew he was coming when you know when that inter Sandman started, and I was like, "Oh, sweet, here he comes!" I got pumped, man. I thought it was great. <clears throat> and then he came out. First of all, he literally looked like—I mean, he always kind of was kind of rough, but he, at least back in the day, he was looked to be somewhat fit. You know, I mean, yeah. at least he could—you know—he could. You know, he could perf- you know, get in the ring and perform a match, you know, with moves and take bumps and do all that stuff. But he's getting up there now. But, and yeah, he's older, but he he literally looked like like someone that you might just find that lives under a turnpike bridge. Oh. You I mean, know? Wow. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. <laughs> the, the dude was, he came out to wrestle... Well, he didn't really wrestle. But he was se. he was booked to be in a four oh, way oh, wrestling match. Oh, I know. No, 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 no. I know. I'm just saying what he. So did I'm saying do. he come out, you know, and his stand with you know his standard T-shirt and jeans, you know, kind of like he did before. Right. But uh, the dude was wearing sandals, man. He was wearing sandals with socks. I didn't even notice he was wearing sandals. Yeah, with socks. yeah, yeah. On these like sandal type shoes with socks. And he had his kendo stick, and he had a beer, and he was, I mean, visibly, visibly drunk, inebriated, full blown. I mean, I'm not talking. He had a little buzz starting to kick. I mean, this was like, this was like the dude sitting at the end of the bar that the bartender is telling you you know, everyone off. else, going, "Yeah, no more for that guy. He's done. Mm-hmm. He's done." Soda or water, coffee, you know. Maybe a lot of coffee. Uh, you know, so he intervened in the match, kind of, sort of. He was supposed to be in it. Yeah, he was but... supposed to be in it. He st- stood outside. Uh, one of the Chico Adams got thrown into the ropes right in front of where Sandman was standing outside the ring with the steps with his kendo, kendo stick. And when he come in, he just... Swacked him right in the back of the shoulder and the neck, and there was a probably you know a good you know nine ten inch long you know a, a, you know scratch was still know, on him at the end of the Chico show. Adams, you know the back of his neck and yeah, right man. down the middle of the shoulder blades, and it was still on him at the end of the show. But you know what my favorite part of that match was, Bill? <laughs> when Sandman. <laughs> Got on the mic at the end of the match and said, "Thank you, Orlando." Yes. <laughs> yeah. Orlando, for those of you that don't know, Orlando is about forty-five minutes, give or take, from where he was located, which was yeah. Cocoa, Florida. Um, so I thought that was pretty amusing. 
Orlando's in another county from where yeah, it's in we Brevard were county. at watching the show. Not Orange County. So yeah, they, we, we thank um, people from another county. I mean, I'm glad you know I got to see him perform, but you know we we but talked. He to didn't him. perform. I mean, we we saw yeah, him come out. It was like he we did saw him come match. out. We saw him, you know. You know, Chuck did some beer things, you know, do some beers with a couple people in the crowd. Yep. We saw him swack someone with, you know, with his uh, kendo, stick. kendo stick. And then we saw him get slammed and pinned. That was it, man. And it was, you And know. Shannon Moore was the new Atomic Next Level champion. Yep, yep. Shannon Moore also announced, too, that this will be his last year of performing. He's going to be going behind the scenes starting next year. Yeah. So, um, if you guys are local and you want to be able to see him perform, this is the last year to do it. So, check it out. Yeah, we, same thing, we, we got the opportunity to, you know, just talk with him for, you know, a few minutes, just have a, you know, a, just a conversation, just the three. It was just, you know, me and Joe and, and him. Just talking about stuff, you know, and uh, so that was kind of cool, um, you know, get to, get to stand stand there, have a conversation with Wes Briscoe, and which we did. is one of the nicest guys you'll ever yeah, meet. Yeah, he is. Wes yeah, Briscoe is. is he? You know what? And I saw how he acted with all his fans, and I saw how he acted even with the little kids. And I tell you what, you could tell he's enjoying what he does. Oh man, yeah. They're... I mean, all of them do. Don't get me wrong. Even Shannon Moore and all. That. But I'm just saying, like, you could tell he's really happy where he's at, man. Because I mean, he was in TNA, and I agree. He, you know, he was in some prominent feuds in TNA. Yeah, he was part of Aces, Aces and Eights. Aces and Eights, one of the biggest storylines, and you know, now that you're was doing... the uh, TNA's equivalent of the NWO. Yeah, there's guys that prefer the Indies, from what I understood the impression I got from when we went to that show. I mean, granted, yeah, they want to be on TV, too, of course. Yeah. You know. But if they get into one of some of the more established indie groups, like ARW, yeah. like I said, they've been around for, three you years. know, three years now and, and are doing well. They're getting some, but you know, they're getting some dang guys in there. I mean, even if they're just brief, that they're coming through, though. I mean, Rhino's been in ARW. Um... Sean Spears, before he went Ty Dillinger. Yep, you know, yep, I remember before that. Before he went to AEW, he was at I AEW. remember seeing advertisements with that. Um, you know, the Bushwhackers. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They performed at AEW. At the their headbangers. The headbangers. The headbangers. headbangers. Well, no, I don't think the Bushwhackers. I think it was the headbangers. Yeah, yeah, I think it was the Not headbangers. Not the Bushwhackers. That might be a little bit. Yeah, because yeah. they're, they're, they're looking pretty rough. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> love me some Bushwhackers, just saying. Um... Uh, the Pope Elijah Burke. You know, he's gonna he's he's performed before and he's gonna be at the next event. Which why don't you tell them what it is, Bill? You for know, ARW. Shamrock Brawl four, I believe. Gonna be on April second in Coco. Same place. Gonna feature some stars as Gangrel yes, from the Gangrel. Attitude Era WWF Crime Time. Crime Time from Get WWE. That money. Yeah, money. they're they're yeah, taking yeah. on uh, the Brothers in Arms. Oh, uh, for their Shit. tag team titles. Yep, Who yep. the Brothers in Arms defended their tag team titles at the show we were at against the duo of Raven, Raven and, and Just Incredible. Yeah. It was a good match. I I enjoyed it. I like the Brothers in Arms tag team. I think, you know, they got a good plug going for them yeah. right now. You know, their manager adds to it, which is Jason cool. Dugan. Yeah, yeah. He really amps them up. He He's really the Atomic them Rapid up. Fire champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. And, and so, kind of like their manager, their front man, their right, right. advocate, their mouthpiece. Yep, yep. And uh, during that match, we uh, saw um, what not having guardrails can do. Because, you remember, the, he almost got into an, an altercation with, with one of the yeah. one of the customers, one of the, the fans. So, that was, <laughs> that was entertaining. So, you know. Yeah, like you said, it was... Alex uh, Red, go with it, man. I like you said, hey. my first ARW, like, being in the front row was kind of cool. At one point, you had security coming up going, move, 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 move. They moved yeah, everybody. Yeah, had to run out of his seat. Moved everybody out of the front cool. row because <laughs> one of the matches had progressed outside the ring and into the front row there. Yep. <clears throat> um, um, 
Also, too, though, what, what match I want to talk about next, which is next on our list, the hardcore triple threat match between Zach Monstar, Chuckles, Chuckles, and the homicidal, suicidal, genocidal. I still don't know what he's looking up Sabu. at. I never will. I heard that it's his god was, or his uh, uncle. I don't know. But that it's cool. match was, uh, was <laughs> that match was off the rails, man. Yeah, that was yes, good. It was, and it let me was, tell you something, Sabu. That man could be eighty years old, and he's still gonna do the same shit he did thirty years ago. So that he has no limits. That guy just—he's yeah, hardcore he's, to the T. He is, man. He's got no fear, man. He just he does not. And, well, you know what, though, for that matter, that does Zach Man- Monstar and Chuggles. They did They amazing. didn't show uh, much. No, dude, they went right with it. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, dude, it, it was so cool because... Chuggles, and Chuggles got is, signed to Ring of Honor. He signed to Ring of Honor, so, yep. you know, he was just back over doing, you know, doing this because he's moving on, you know, he's... Bigger and be- greater things. He may, you know, we may see him. Maybe, on, yeah, he's, he's got maybe AEW one to day. A bigger maybe, promotion. maybe WWE. That'd be amazing. NXT, T, uh, NWA, Which, Impact. And you know, look at Zach Monstar. Some though. of these guys that Zach Monstar was very entertaining. Zach Monstar. He's got a I good shtick. Yeah, I like it. I can very much gimmick. see him somewhere. Um, I, so, let me just say in the Chico match. Chico Adams is going to be somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. But let me let me just say this real quick. In that triple threat hardcore match, I saw something that I've never seen before, which is why ARW is very creative. I like it. Um, so usually when you see a wrestler bring in a bag, it's full. They dump the bag out. Yep. And what was in the bag? What's uh, no? What's typically in the bag? Usually that we oh, see thumbtacks. Right. So I was like, ooh, thumbtacks. Yeah, well, you know, what do we mean by, you know, they like hold the bag up. Yeah. Oh, Mick Foley oh was very here. known for it. And then they dump it all out into the ring and it's, you know, the silver thumbtacks. Yep. So, <coughs> me being a dad, I can understand this. I believe it was Chuckles that held the bag, pulled I, the bag out. I think I it was. I think so. And dumped it out. I don't know. The who, Clown Prince. Yeah, dumped it out. And it was worse than thumbtacks, ladies and gentlemen. It was Legos. it was Legos, yes, Legos. Legos, tons and tons of Legos. Now, if you have a kid and you've walked on Legos in the middle of the night, pitch dark, and you step on it barefoot, it really freaking hurts. So and I, I cringed when I, I saw when I saw Sandman get Sabu or Sabu, Sabu sorry. got body slammed. Sabu got body yeah. slammed. Into the Legos. <laughs> into the Legos. And I was in the front row. I could see his face, man. And we go, he was like, ah. You know, he was legit. Like, God damn it, that hurt, man. And when he came up by the ring room, you could see there was Lego pieces all like stuck embedded in his back. And he kept reaching back trying to brush them off. And I was just like, damn. It was. Let's just go over the list of weapons real quick. There was a piece of plywood that was used as a table that got busted. Yeah. Um, there was these pointed wooden sticks that they used. Yeah, like 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 uh shish kebab skewers, you know, something you would yeah, you know, the Except bamboo skewers. They were forehead skewers. <laughs> yeah, well they was. So yes, that's that's what they were. Used for. Held some and Smack the ends of them. Yep. yep. And chuckles forehead. And, and I saw a fan pulled his hand away. And there were a couple of them one of the fans outside. Out. I was outside during part of the show after that match, and he comes up to me and a few other people. He goes, "I got the pointed sticks, man. Look, there's still some of Chuckles' blood." I'm like, "What the fuck? Good for you, buddy." <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was innovative, dude. It was creative. It was great. Uh, like man, I said. That was awesome. That was that was. I've never seen a hardcore match like that up and, and it wasn't not just was it a hardcore match. It was a hardcore match with Sabu. Yeah. I mean, Sabu, if I anyone mean, come on has ever watched, <coughs> excuse me, old ECW, then you know he was. You know he was. Yeah, well, big a deal it was that you know. Let me, Sabu, let me just go on the record. Side for my this. three favorite hardcore wrestlers of all time. Terry Funk, 
Mick Foley, and then Sabu. So, yeah. so for me, that was amazing because that was my first time ever seeing him live perform. I've never seen him at a show. So that was that was really cool for me. Yeah. I mean, I know it was cool for you because Bill oh, was a yeah, huge absolutely. ECW fan. And I tell you what, those other two uh, two young pups, they brought it, man. Oh, man. They Tom, brought Tom it. They, Lynn Monster? Absolutely. They brought it, man. That that was good. Um, so, yeah. Um, there is one talent that I think is hilarious because he likes to wear golden clothes attire. Oh, that was a different match. I was just going to get to that match yep. next. There was another match um, that featured uh, <clears throat> Jerry Swirls. And for the life of me, I'll, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember what that guy's name was, his partner that was with him. Well, it started out talking smack to Alex Red, the uh, promoter. But uh, you can tell that this guy that was Jerry Swirls' partner, you can definitely tell he's... He's been doing a while. His he was he was good, you know. He was oh yeah, good. he was pulling off moves to make yep. him look good. There were some botches. And his in the chops, match. his chops were on point. Yep, yep. Uh, um, but they took on the the uh, YouTube the, sensation. The YouTube sensation. Superhuman. Co. Co. Yep. Oh, excuse me. Co. A R W hardcore champions. Superhuman and his good friend Paul. So, if you're wondering who's Superhuman and Good Friend Paul, go to YouTube and look him up. He's the guy who was on uh, on, on on YouTube videoing himself delivering diving elbow drops onto refriger old refrigerators and microwave ovens. I've seen him go through plywood, too. And, uh, yeah, tables. And yeah. He takes his shirt off and he's like, "Oh, this is from my juggalos and juggalettes." And he takes the shirt off, he drops the elbow drop, and then good friend Paul is the guy he's always wearing, like a luchador mask of some kind. Yeah, man, and it was entertaining. And, uh, hang on, I mean, in fact, they were just on ridiculousness the other night. That's what I heard. Uh, I saw a post so, on that, so I'll have to check. So that yeah, out. so they were there, um, and they had it was uh, kind of a three on two sort of thing because. Good friend Paul and Superhuman are sort of they're one cohesive unit. <laughs> well, Alex Red got involved and made it a uh, handicap yeah. match, three on two. So yeah, yeah, because they brought out Axe Clover, Mama's yes. boy, Axe Clover. Yep, yep. Um, so um, yeah, that, that was Human, an entertaining. It was an entertaining match. Superhuman um, did have to unfortunately get Jerry Swirl's ass in his face, though. That was. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean that that would be the only thing if I was a wrestler, dude. Go put your ass in my face. Yeah, Jerry Swartz was it. wearing. <laughs> he was wearing these like purple. He was representing pants Betty White with uh, the Golden Girls. <laughs> it said Golden Girls and had pictures of them on it. Look, man. And then he was wearing a. It was a good show. He okay. was wearing a T-shirt. It was a good it was show. A personalized T-shirt. It was kind of like airbrushed pictures of the Golden Girls and his face. Was on there too. Was I didn't really notice the shirt. I was still yeah. laughing that he was wearing pajamas. Oh, yeah, yeah, they were all tucked into his wrestling boots, and oh my goodness, it was in memory of B. Arthur. Yeah, yeah, man. But they were they were entertaining. It, it was you know what, and like I said, Alex Red, he's got a good thing going here. So the main reason why we wanted to do this show was because, like I said, every time Bill and I go to a live performance, whether it is a indie show. Um, whether it is, as Alex Red says, and I do believe it, the new face of it, of extreme wrestling, ARW, or whether it's an NXT taping, whether it's Raw or SmackDown, if we go to a live show, we're going to make special episodes just for that show and review. Just to explain Captain Bill and Big Shot Joe's experience yep. and share it with all of you. And Joe will share, show you his. Yeah, we took... Or three, two, one, screw shirts, just ah, ah. shirts, yep. and got autographed. Right, right. Some of the different. This um, way, they know who the three, two, one. Some of the screw different is. wrestlers. You right, know, right. There, like, uh, I got me some Destiny on here. Yeah, you Vertigo, Chico, Chico Adams, Adams, Johnny Atomic, Gia Roman, Zach Monster, yeah, Destiny. Yeah, Gia Roman, man, she's cool. Chuckles. Chuckles, Chuckles, you the man, Chuckles. Uh, Jason Dugan. Right, right. Superhuman, good friend Paul. Yeah, yeah. Wes Briscoe, 
Shannon Moore. Shannon Moore. Yep. 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 So, so, but it was it was cool. You know, it's, it was man. And I'll tell I'll tell you what, man. I really like. I, uh, I enjoyed myself, man. I, I had a good time. It, honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. That was the very first indie show I've been to, okay? But I'll tell you what, that was one of my favorite wrestling shows I've been to. And I've been to Raw's, I've been to WrestleMania, I've been to... I know it sounds like I'm amping this up, but the reason why I say this is the personable feeling. You know, the personal feeling there. It's There's no guardrails. You literally, when you're walking, can walk next to a performer. You know, you can talk to the crew. You know, the security guys, all of them are real cool. You know, mm-hmm. they're there. They're fans themselves. So it's like, I think they take it from the fans' perspective. And, you know, they yeah. know they have a certain um, demographic for just their product. And, yeah. And I love it. And I will be attending more shows, Alex Red. So. Oh, yeah. And it was cool. We got, you know, me and me and Joe, we got to, you know, afterwards that the show was over and done. And. Everyone had pretty much cleared out. They started taking ring and stuff down. We were able to go on back, and you know, like I said, that's where we got to meet and talk to some of the, you know, some of the guys. Uh, it was, it was really cool. At, at that point, going back, being able to just go back and back. I mean, Joey's back there having a cigarette, you know, shooting the crap with uh, Justin uh, Raven and Just Incredible. You know, and I, I was inside talking to Shane Douglas. Right. You right. know, he's sitting back in there. You know. Drinking, a, you know, got a, he's, he's got a soda. He's back there drinking, you know, or a water or whatever. I, I got to talk to Sabu for about two minutes. That was cool. Yeah. Um, Shane, well, du- we, Shane I, Douglas, though, let me tell you something. Even though he was a prominent heel, Shane Douglas is a really nice guy, man. Yeah. I, I, he, and he's really, the, and he's the type he likes to talk to you. Like, he's not one of those, he's going to brush you off to... You know, he was like, he was ready to get in full-fledged conversations with us, but he had to end up going because, you know, those guys are on schedule and yeah. stuff. But he, and he's really even cool. though, I mean, for, for performance-wise, it was, wasn't, uh, left a lot to be desired. It was kind of cool just standing there having a everyday conversation, though, with Sandman earlier. <laughs> because it was Sandman. I mean, he told yeah. me all about how... Now he just found out that you know that day that he was going to be a grandpa and his, his son was having a having a boy and <clears throat> of course naturally first thing I thought of was like Grandpa Sandman oh okay. oh wow oh buddy oh, and, he, and people thought Grandpa Oz you know Ozzy as a grandpa was comical I can only imagine the Sandman as a grandpa oh jeez so do you think when the kid's born he's going to come out with a kendo stick. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was cool though. It was, I mean, it was cool. It, it was very. Cool. He was plastered, dude. Like he, he you know, <laughs> we went up to uh, talk to him about what three, two, one screw is, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, just tell me what you want me to do. What do you want me to sign?" <laughs> All right, well, right on. He's to the point. I get it. Yeah. Um, we did not get his autograph because um, they were charging, unlike the other stars, which I get. They have to charge those guys. They got to make a living. So I just, I didn't bring cash. I figured they'd have the little thing for the debit card on the phones, you know. But next time, we're going to be getting some autographs. Yeah, you know what, though? I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna pay 20 bucks for his, his autograph. No, not after the way he was acting with us anyways and acting on the show. And then when the fact he couldn't even get the freaking city name right, that, that was... It was hilarious, but it was like, whoa, he's got a problem. So, yeah. You know, but who but, are we? But listen, I, guys. Point being, it, we enjoyed ourselves. It was fun. It was amazing. And, and we, we strongly, strongly recommend you check out uh, their show. Which is? Your local, like you said, April 2nd. Shamrock local Brawl 4. Center. And, oh, and I was, I was naming off some of the guys, though. Also, with the show, like I said, Gangrel from the Attitude Era. Then you have Crime Time, which we talked about. But one more, The Pope. Elijah, Elijah Burke. Elijah Burke, man. From TNA. From TNA, from WWE. He, in fact, since we're talking about ECW, he was one of their uh, newer guys that they threw onto the WWE ECW. Yeah. You know, so he, that's where he was really getting his start. Um, you know, so he's been around for a while, too, now. And, you know... I, I would love to meet those guys if we could. That'd be great. 
Yeah. You know. Shane Douglas will be maybe, back. Maybe we'll we get, get maybe we can get crime time with us so we can go raid a Walmart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> so <coughs> you know, get that money, money. If I do have a like a five dollar bill or something, I'm probably gonna have them sign it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and I bet you they would. <laughs> so um, so yeah, check it out, man. Go to uh, you can find them Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling. Yep, on Facebook. On Facebook. Um, they they have a YouTube channel where they you can have see a Facebook page. All their um, all and, their uh, their shows you can see on YouTube. Yep. Yep. They're, they have a Facebook page, and they, you know, Alex Red, like I said, he's an admin in yep. uh, Beyond the Squared Circle. Uh, on Facebook, my wrestling group, and I could tell he posts on there uh, yep. a lot, you know, he's regularly. Posted so updates about and, stuff, and, and he is good shows about talking to his fa talking to the fans. Oh, absolutely! He, yes. he actually wants input because that's some of his posts. So if you guys are a fan of ARW, write him on Facebook. You know, he may want input on stuff because he's he seems like he's open to that. Yeah. So, I mean, but uh, so check it out. Yeah. And uh, the next time Bill and Joe, Captain Bill, he's Captain Bill, Big Shot yes. Joe go to another live performance, we're going to make another special edition. Absolutely we are. So <coughs> that's what we'll call this, 321 Screws Special Edition. There you go. I like it. Run with it. We'll talk about it more later. Man, he never takes my idea. <laughs> Here we go. All right, <laughs> folks. So, uh, again, uh, as always, if you have not already, please hit the subscribe button oh, down below. And Gia Roman. I Give did. us a thumbs up. Yep, don't forget and that. Click that bell icon it's so just, you don't miss out on it. any new content that we upload. Whether it's uh, our, you know, little special reviews of events like this. Little bill, uh, little videos Bill makes with hats, you know, stuff like that. You know, the the weekly the weekly three two one throwdown. I do want to say this though. Our Captain Bill Big Shot Joe watch a movie review. Definitely watch it. Last one was Van Wilder two. Rise of Taj. Taj. But also, I just want to say, Gia Roman, she's awesome. Yes, she is. Spoke with her for a while. Very polite lady, but she kicks ass in the ring. Um, and she's pretty easy on the eyes. <laughs> I guess she yes, is. she is. I, I enjoyed her. I say hello. My wife might be watching. I enjoyed her yeah. Wonder Woman themed. Uh, yeah, she's cute. Attire. She's cute. She's um, cute. Yeah. Oh yeah. She. Uh, yeah. You know, like I said, sat and talked with her for quite a while. Got my picture with her. Uh, sat and talked with Destiny a little bit. Got my picture with her. Let me get my picture with her. <laughs> Bill. So whatever. So. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's the cool thing about these shows too. It is. is you can watch these people wrestle, and then you're going to get the opportunity to you know meet see them. them walk around and, and meet them and talk to them, and you know it's, get an autograph, get it's a an picture. Ex it's an experience you won't get from something that is like, and this isn't putting any of the other companies down, but WWE, yeah, Japan, all them big arena shows. I mean, they yeah, can't. You, you can't get. They can't know, right do it. Up with the way yeah. it's set up. The way, and I mean, honestly, those guys. Like literally the next day they're doing another show, you know. So they got to get up and get out. These guys, since it's more of a personal atmosphere, yeah. you know, they could take their time, pack up, do what they got to do, and it's yeah. The majority of them live, you know, you know, local. fairly close, local, yeah. You know, so check it out. That's right. Tell them three, two, one, screw sent you. That's right. All right. Well, what do you think, Captain Bill? You think uh, this is good for the latest, the very first episode of Special Edition? Eh, you know. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comments. Do you like 321 Screws Special Edition? Or should it be called something else, according to him? That guy. By the way, look at that awesome shirt. Woo! There ain't one like it, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. All right. This is Alrighty, folks. Captain Bill. Big Shot Joe. Big Shot Joe. We out of here. Peace.